King and Omega chapter 155 Encirclement The chapter starts with the Heavenly Wolves chasing Shia Ji through a transmitter that they had put on his body. Obviously he removes it and does the usual cliche of putting it on an animal, this time in a rat. Akoya appears behind Shia Ji just like the main villain from a horror movie and this time he has his signature baton. One of my theories from last week completely falls apart as even the two stooges from the worm want to kill Shia Ji. This man has absolutely no allies. Then comes the great reveal that Shia Ji, just like Wakatsuki, has Superman syndrome and by consequence his twin brother as well. Maybe that explains why despite being portrayed as a cowardly character, this man appears to be so freaking jacked. But, you know, every character in Kang and Omega is jacked, if we're being honest. Everyone looks like a bodybuilder, despite the fact that this is a martial arts manga. But, you know, even the author of Ajime no Ippo eventually toned it down, so I'm holding out some hope for Kang and Omega. Regarding the Superman syndrome, on one hand, I think it's cool and it's said to be a disease in this world, so it's just normal that other people have it, you know, and not just this one single person in the world. On the other hand, it was Wakatsuki's unique quirk and now it's not anymore, so I don't mind it too much. They even say that this version of the Superman Syndrome is not as powerful as Wakatsuki's, but I imagine that Wakatsuki hardcore fans may not enjoy this chapter very much. The fight goes on and Shiaji overpowers both Akoya and Gaoryuki, who pops up with a knife. And they say that he's not only very strong, he's also very talented at martial arts. So the metaphor from the few past weeks now makes more sense. He has the physical attributes and the talent to be a great fighter, he just has the heart of a coward. I could only imagine what some other fighters would do if they had his body. Finally, the chapter ends with Alma joining the chase. I'm going to be honest, I usually don't like the worm stuff, but this time I'm hyped, and especially now that Alma's joining the chase. I love a good street fight and both Kang and Ashura and Omega started out with street fights, or at least in their first few chapters, and this is going back to the roots. I wouldn't even mind a flashback of Shia Ji right about now, because I'm interested, quite honestly. The guy has so much stuff going on for him, how did he grow up to be such a coward? I think that would be interesting to see. My prediction is the same as last week, I still think that Shia Ji is going to escape somehow despite having apparently the entire world after him, and now that Alma's joined the fray, I think that Alma's going to be the one that discovers what Gao and Akoya have been up to for the past few months. This was this week's review, and see you in the next one.